Hello, welcome to my talk all about the fruits. This talk is the second part of the potential flows on application of potential flows. In this talk, I will show you some simple but yet important applications and explain why we need to study the uniform flows and the flows from the singularities such as the source, sink, and doublets or dipoles and their combinations. And I will show how this flow provides the foundations for solving the problem of float structure interactions. In fluids, Bernoulli's equation may be the most useful principle. The applications include dynamic boundary conditions, Peter tube, Venturi tube, airfoil design, racing car and bullet chain design, hydropower, carburetor and spray, and some interesting applications in sports, spinning balls, as football, tennis balls, golf balls and table tennis, and more. In principle, there may be different forms of Bernoulli's equation for different practical problems, and these are under the different assumptions. Generally, the Bernoulli's equation can be derived under three combined assumptions, one, two, and three. The fruit is invisible. The body force acting on the fruit must be conservative. The fluid gravitational force is such a force. The fluid is either irrotational, which can be either steady or unsteady, or on the fluid streamlines, this is only for steady flows. The first application of the Bernoulli equation in this talk is the Peter tube for measuring the fluid velocity. This is one of the pitot tube which is used on an airplane. There is an interesting timeline for pitot tube invention and the theory establishment. Only Peter invented the device in 1732, which was before Bernoulli's principle in 1738 and Bernoulli's equation in 1752. More than 100 years later, start from 1856, only Darcy improved the design of the Peter tube, which was in a similar form as we see now. But the theory for Peter tube was not established yet until 1913 when Professor John Airy of University of Michigan used the Bernoulli's equation to establish the theory for Peter tube as we know today. In application, when the Peter tube is placed with its head directly to the incoming flow, and the hole at the head of the pitot tube measures the total pressure P1, and the hole at the side of the pitot tube measures the static pressure P0. The pressure difference between the total and the static pressure delta P is actually the dynamic pressure given by this from this, we can easily calculate the fluid velocity as this. However, for practical application, Peter tube may need to be calibrated, and the calibrated coefficient c here would be very close to 1. In this slide, Peter tube are used to measure the fluid velocities in nominal flow, and this uses a pitot tube to measure the velocity 
of the Hagen Pursui flow or use Peter tube to measure the flow velocity in the boundary layer. The question is, are these two measurements using the Peter tubes are correct? In principle, in such cases, Bernoulli's equation is not fully satisfied, since in both cases, the flows are viscous, and thus, the conditions for the Bernoulli's equation is not fully satisfied. However, in reality, we may have the requirement for such applications, but such measurement might not be very convincing, at least in principle. Therefore, such a measuring result should be carefully calibrated before any use. The second example is the unsteady Bernoulli's equation used for ocean wave theory. In this slide, I will show how the dynamic boundary condition is applied for ocean wave. In studying the ocean wave, the Cartesian coordinate is adopted with z equals to zero at the steer water surface at that axis pointing upward. The wave elevation z equals eta, which in the 2D wave is the function of x and the time t. So the dynamic boundary condition on the free surface is obtained from the Bernoulli's equation as this. Here, P0 is the atmospheric pressure at the sea level. By dropping the higher order of the component, we can have the linearized dynamic boundary condition for the wave elevation. So at the free surface, that is, at the wave elevation, z equals eta, where the pressure p is equal to p0. As such, we can obtain the wave elevation eta given by this mathematical equation. It can be seen here, the wave elevation can be calculated with the differentiation of the velocity potential function with regard to time. And uh, for uh, reference, the linearized kinematic boundary condition is given here. This boundary condition basically calculates the fluid vertical velocity used two different methods. Thus, they are equal. Combine the linearized kinematic and the dynamic boundary condition, we can obtain the wave elevation eta as this. In this equation, A is the wave amplitude, K is the wave number, and omega is the wave angular frequency. And for a reference, the velocity potential function for the ocean wave is given here. This is the velocity potential function for the ocean wave in deep water. The second part of the talk is for the examples of some simple potential flows. Superficially, just are just the examples of simple irrotational flows. But in fact, it is these simple flows which provide the foundation for serving the real potential flow 
problems. We will see this later. The simple flows include the uniform flows, the flow of a source or sink, the flow of a source single pair, the flow of a doublet or a diaper, the combination of the uniform flow and the source, the combination of a uniform flow and the doublet. A uniform flow may be the simplest flow, yet a very important flow for studying potential flow. The velocity potential function of such a uniform flow is very simple, given as phi equals u0x, and the corresponding velocity component are calculated as this. We can easily check the flow satisfies the place equation, satisfies the continuity equation of the incompressible flow. The uniform flow satisfies the zero core of velocity vector. All this conform a uniform flow is a potential flow. And in such a flow, Navier-Stokes equation can be simplified due to the constant velocity as this. So we can get the pressure of the flow as this. If we take the pressure P0 at y equals to 0, we have the pressure expression as this. We can also obtain the pressure from the Bernoulli's equation. We assume the pressure equals P0 at y equaling to 0. So the Bernoulli's equation given by this, we have the pressure expression. Hence, we can see these two methods given the same expressions for the pressure. Based on the component of the stream function, we have equation like this. Thus, we can obtain the stream function psi equals u0 times y. The first flow of a singularity is the flow of a source or sink. In 2D, the velocity potential function is given by this, where the Q is the flow rate at the origin. The velocity component is calculated as U and V here. So we can make the calculation for the velocity gradient. Thus, we can get the Laplace equation or the continuity equation for incompressible flow. For a reference, the 3D potential function for a source is given as this. We can also check that the core of the velocity vector for such a flow is zero given here. So the flow of a source is a rotational flow. The potential function can be also given in a polar coordinate, the velocity function given by this. And the corresponding radio and the tangential velocity component are this. So based on the velocity component definition from the stream function, we can have the equation as this. Thus, 
we can obtain the stream function here, the stream function per se. In this slide, a combination of a source and a single pair is studied. So simply, the total velocity potential function is given the sum of the velocity potential function of the source and the sink. So we can write the potential function as this. Generally, the source single pair is not very useful in practice since we have to decide both the source single strength and the distance between them. However, one of its special cases would be very useful when the distance a becomes an infinitesimal and the source single pair becomes a doublet or a dipole. In this slide, a derivation is shown how we can obtain the potential function from that of the source sink pair step by step. We have the velocity potential function for the source and the sink pair. So we can write the potential function as this. Divide the terms use the x square plus y square. We can get the equation as this. So drop the higher order of a and then we have the equation as this. We continue the derivation here. We first make the second term in the denominator to be a higher order. So we have this. So drop the higher order term. We can have the potential function expression as this and this. By using this formula and this, we can have the potential function for the doublet as this. Now we can define the new strength for the doublet mu equals 2aq. So the final velocity potential function for the doublet is given by this equation. For a reference, the potential function for a doublet in 3D is given by this. So in a polar coordinate, the potential function can be expressed as this. And the corresponding velocity components are given by this. Based on the definition of the velocity component from the stream function, so we have the equation as this. Thus, we can obtain the stream function for the doublet as this. If we draw the stream lines, which is from the stream function, the net lines, and the equipotential lines, the black lines, here, we can see the stream lines and the equipotential lines are perpendicular everywhere. This is actually given by the equation that the dot product of the gradient of the stream function and of the potential function is zero. Now in this slide, we will see what we can get for the uniform flow passes the source. First, the overall velocity potential function is simply the superimposition of the potential functions of the uniform flow, this, and the flow from the source, as this. In a polar coordinate, the potential function 
can be expressed as this. Likewise, the streaming function can be also expressed as the superimposition of those of uh, uniform flow and the source. This part is a uniform flow streaming function and this part is streaming function for the source. If we plot the stream lines for the uniform flow and the source, we can see there is a bullet shaped structure enclosed by the red line. In fact, the red line actually separates the uniform flow, the flow outside of the red line, and then the flow of the source in the red line. There's no flow across the red boundary. This is exactly the same as non-penetration boundary. The incoming flow will pass the bullet, which is exactly equivalent to a solid structure of same shape. As such, the source could represent a solid bullet structure in a unit form, and the size of the bullet can be determined by both the source strength and the velocity of the uniform flow. That is a combination of the uniform flow speed U0 and the source strength Q. In this slide, Another interesting example of the potential flow. A uniform flow passes a doublet. Similarly, the total potential function is given by the potential function of the uniform flow plus the velocity potential function for the doublet. In a polar coordinate, the velocity potential function is given by this. Similarly, the total stream function is of those of uniform flow and the doublet as this. So, on a circle of the radius of capital R, the stream function psi is zero. So, this means the circle is the stream line for the potential flow of a uniform flow and the doublet. The radius of capital R is dependent on the doublet strength mu and the velocity of the uniform flow. We can also calculate the radial velocity component and the tangential velocity component. So on the circle, the radial velocity component is zero. This means there will be no flow across the circle. So if we draw the stream lines for the uniform flow passing a doublet, we can see the doublet is equivalent to a circular solid structure as seen in the plot. The third part of the talk is on the practical applications of potential flow theory. When we start fluid structure interaction, it seems we might obtain the velocity potentials for the fluid motion such as the uniform flow and the flow from the singularities. But the solid structure are not fluid. How we can obtain the potential function for structures? This is an important question. If we cannot represent the structures using potential function, the potential flow could become meaningless. Thus, one big question would be how 
we can specify the structure in the rotation of rows, or how we can use the velocity potential function for the present the structures. As shown in the previous slides, we have seen that the source in a uniform flow is equivalent to a solid bullet since there is no flow across the separation line, the red line in this plot. Similarly, the uniform flow past the doublet and the doublet could be equivalent to a solid soccer. These are two examples how we can use the singularities to represent some simple structures. We can have some other combinations in practical application, such as the uniform flow past the vortex, which is often used for studying a structure with the lift, for instance, an airfoil. In reality, we also answer the question where we can find uniform flows. In fact, we may hardly see the natural uniform flows. One of such examples is the uniform flow generated in the test section in wind or water tunnels. For most practical flow, they are mostly bound with boundaries. Therefore, the natural flow are normally not uniform. But then, why we start uniform flow, or what is the importance of such flows? In reality, we hardly see any uniform flows, but we have many equivalents of uniform flow for practical problems. For instance, the airplane flying in the common air with the velocity of u0. This is equivalent to the case of the airplane is fixed and the uniform flow coming to the airplane and the uniform flow speed is u0. You can see here. So this principle is applicable to the load vehicle or the train. The ship traveling the sea, hopefully this is a calm sea. One more interesting case is the sinusoidal flows. For instance, the ocean waves. The flow velocity is varying sinusoidally with time. The mathematical expression is given by this. However, if the dynamic system is linear, this is a very useful assumption for many applications. Then, the time factor in the dynamic system can be omit, and then the dynamic system can be transformed to the frequency domain, and the velocity in frequency domain it's a uniform velocity. In this slide, we will see how we can use the principle we presented before for the case of uniform flow pass and airfoil. So first, we need to analyze the surface of the airfoil and distribute the source or sink on the panels, like the dots on the airfoil. And then the velocity potential can be obtained by solving the Laplace equation as this. Consider the boundary condition, which could decide the strength of the source, the boundary condition normally given by the non-penetration conditions on the boundary. 
after the velocity potential is served, the pressure in the fluid can be calculated using the Bernoulli equation, in this case as this. And we can calculate the lift air using the integration of the pressure on the surface of the aerofoil. For the notation of flow, the jerk D cannot be calculated because in notation of flow, we cannot consider the viscous boundary layer. For wave structure interactions, similarly, we need to penalize the structure surface and the distributed sources doublets on the panels for 2D and 3D cases. Then we can solve the Laplace equation with the corresponding boundary conditions. In the wave and the structure interaction, the boundary conditions are much more complicated than the uniform flow pass than airfoil. The boundary conditions here include free surface condition, seabed condition, body surface condition, and the far field condition. After solving the Laplace equation, obtaining the velocity potential function, we can calculate the pressure in the fluid using the Bernoulli's equation as this. And more often, we can use the linearized Bernoulli's equation as this. Now, we can compare the parameters in time domain and the frequency domain. Suppose in the time domain, the potential function is given by this and uh, its corresponding differentiation with regard to time is given by this. In frequency domain, the potential can be simply given by the amplitude of the potential function and its differentiation with regard to time is simply given this i omega phi zero. And then we can calculate the force and the moment from the pressure acting on the body given by this. After that, we can build the equation for the motion of the structure in fluid. This for the translation of motion and this for the rotation of motion. So far, the boundary element method based on the potential flows have been well established and the software can be available commercially or use the open source or the research code. The famous commercial boundary element method include WAMIT and ANSYS AQUA. We can download the open source for the boundary element method called NEMO and in many universities and institutes they may have their in-house research codes. In this slide, I will show how we can use the boundary element code for both commercial or open source. Generally, there are four steps. For the first step, penalize the body surface and distribute the source or doublets on the panels. For doing that, you need to discrete the body surface into panels and specify the source or diaper on them. The second step is solving the Laplace equation using the relevant boundary conditions to decide the strength of the source or diaper and thus the velocity potentials. For doing that, you need to specify the wave conditions, including the water depth. The third step 
is to calculate the fluid force and the moment acting on the structure. Here, you need to specify the reference point. In most cases, it is the center of gravity. This reference point is very important for calculating the moment acting on the structure. And the last step is solving the structure motion based on the Newton's second law of motion. You need to specify the mass and the moment of the inertia, the center of gravity, and the motion modes. For example, it is fixed or free floating. This is an example of the heave motion of a cylinder in wave.